hello. So here we have the power rule and the power rule tells us that the derivative of x to the n's power equals n times x to the n minus 1. So if we have a variable x raised to an exponent that is a number, then to find the derivative we move this exponent in front and we decrease the exponent by 1. For example, if we have a function f of x equals x to the fourth power, then to find the derivative f prime of x, we move 4 in front and we decrease the exponent by 1. So the derivative is 4x cubed. Now one method of proving this rule is to use the definition of the derivative function. And by definition, f prime of x equals the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h approaches 0. And although the power rule works for any real numbers, the proof that I will use will show how this rule works for the natural numbers. So let's start with the function f of x equals x to the n's power. Then according to the definition of the derivative, f prime of x equals the limit. And now in the numerator, first we need f of x plus h, and this means that in this function we need to replace x with x plus h. So we will write x plus h to the n's power minus x to the n's power over h as h approaches 0. Now to evaluate the limit, at this point we cannot use direct substitution because if we replace each h with 0, it will cause both the numerator and the denominator to become 0. So again, in the numerator, if we replace this h with 0, then we will have x to the n's power minus x to the n's power and that will be 0. And if we replace this h with 0, then we will have 0 over 0. So we need to find a way to simplify this numerator and try to factor out h so that h and h could cancel. Now notice that in the numerator we have a difference of two expressions, each raised to the n's power. If we replace x plus h with a and x with b, then we can say that in the numerator we have a to the n's power minus b to the n's power. Now if n equals 2, then this expression will be a to the second power minus b to the second power, and we can factor it as a minus b times a plus b. Now if n equals 3, then we would have a cubed minus b cubed, and this will be factored as a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. And if n equals 4, then a to the fourth power minus b to the fourth power equals a minus b times a cubed plus a squared b plus a b squared and plus b cubed. And although this part could be factored more, what I wanted to show you here that each of these expressions have the same factor a minus b. Also, notice that in the second parenthesis, the first term is a with an exponent that is one less than the initial a. And as we move to the right, the exponent of a decreases. And starting with the second term, we see b to the first power, and moving to the right, the exponent of b increases. And the last term is b cubed. And also notice that in each term, if we add the exponents, we will get 3. So in the first term, the exponent is already 3. In the second term, if we add exponent 2 and exponent 1, 2 plus 1 is 3. And the same here, 1 plus 2 is 3. And one more thing to notice in the second parenthesis is that the number of terms 
is 4 and that is the same as the initial exponent. Now what if we have a to the n's power minus b to the n's power and we factor that a minus b? Then what do we write in the second parenthesis? If we follow the same pattern as above, we will start with a raised to n minus 1. The second term will be a to the n minus 2 times b plus a to the n minus 3 times b squared plus and so on plus then at some point we will have a squared and b to the n minus 3 plus a times b to the n minus 2 plus b to the n minus 1. So just like we had above, the first term is a to the n minus 1 and the last one is b to the n minus 1. And if we add the exponents of the rest of the terms, we will also get n minus 1. For example, n minus 3 plus 2 is n minus 1. And how many terms we have in the second parenthesis? We have n of them. And this is the formula we need to use in the numerator except in place of a we have to write x plus h and in place of b we have to write x. So I will erase this part and make room for the proof. So now here we have the formula we need and I will write that f prime of x equals the limit and now in the numerator we will start the first parenthesis and in place of a we will write x plus h and in place of b we will write x. So then we will have x plus h minus x and you might already notice how x minus x is 0 and this h will cancel with the h in the denominator. But for now let's continue with the numerator. So again in place of a we will write x plus h to the n minus 1 plus x plus h to the n minus 2 times x plus and so on plus x plus h times x to the n minus 2 plus x to the n minus 1. All this over h as h approaches 0. And now x minus x is 0 and h will cancel with h in the denominator. And what we have now is the limit of x plus h to the n minus 1 plus x plus h to the n minus 2 times x plus and so on x plus h times x to the n minus 2 plus x to the n minus 1 as h approaches 0. And now to evaluate this limit we can use direct substitution and replace each h with 0. Then we don't write the limit anymore and instead we will have x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 2 times x plus and so on plus x times x to the n minus 2 plus x to the n minus 1. Now in these products we have the same base so we can add the exponents. Then what we will have will be x to the n minus 1 plus then here n minus 2 plus 1 is n minus 1 so we will have x to the n minus 1 plus and so on plus another x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 1. Now do you recall how many terms we have here? We have n of them. Then if we add them together we will get n x 
to the n minus 1. And this is the power rule. Thank you for watching.